Today we are going to talk about negative feedback amplifiers and the ideal operational amplifier. To start off, we are going to look at our original generic amplifier circuit and use this to define what an ideal amplifier is. So you may recall that we can split up any amplifier circuit into three distinct sections. A source section, an amplifier section, and a load section. You may also recall that in our previous class we defined the ideal behavior such that our voltage Vs, or excuse me, our output voltage Vl of T would be a scaled version where A is that scaling factor of the applied voltage Vs of T. So another thing that we mentioned previously is that an amplifier is defined by three parameters. Our input resistance, our output resistance, and our gain. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what values of Rn, Rout, and AVOL need to be in order to force this equation to be true for our amplifier circuit. So let's start by applying voltage division around the source side. Right? So our voltage Vn would be Vs multiplied by our input resistance Rn divided by our practical source resistance Rs plus our input resistance Rn. And we want this to be exactly equal to Vs. What value of Rn will make that happen? Well, if Rn is infinitely large, then the contribution of Rs in the denominator is insignificant. So, in an ideal amplifier, Rn is infinitely large. This causes the voltage that's applied by the source to be the exact same thing as the input voltage for our amplifier. If we look at uh, a Kirchhoff's voltage law loop around the output side, we can see that V out, V L of T is going to be equal to A V O L times V N of T times R L divided by RL plus R out. And so in order for VL of T, our output voltage, to just be a scaled version of the input voltage, we need R out to go to zero. Effectively, we're saying that we want the voltage drop over this output resistance to be as small as possible so that the voltage generated here matches the output voltage, which is the voltage drop over our load resistance. So we've determined the input resistance for an ideal amplifier and the output resistance for an ideal amplifier. Our last parameter is the open loop gain. And there's not really any analysis that can be done to determine this. It's just common sense, really. So by that, I mean if the goal of an amplifier is to boost the input signal as much as possible, then an ideal amplifier will have an infinite open loop gain. This is because you can't 
you literally cannot get any larger gain than this. The next thing that we're going to do is compare the behavior of a negative feedback operational amplifier circuit using the practical op amp model and the ideal op amp model. So we're going to start with this circuit uh, using the practical model where our open loop gain will be 10 to the 5 volts per volt, our input resistance will be 1 mega ohm, and our output resistance will be 100 ohms. We are going to try to determine the output voltage of the circuit, the closed loop voltage gain of the circuit, AVCL, the value of the differential voltage between the inverting and non-inverting terminals, the input resistance seen by the one volt source, and the output resistance seen looking in through the output terminals of the operator. So since we're starting with the practical model, we are going to need to redraw our op-amp circuit using the practical model. So I'm going to start with my input resistance, Rn, and I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to put my inverting terminal on top. So this is going to be B minus and my non-inverting terminal on bottom, um, such that the differential voltage VD will have this polarity. It's just going to make things a little bit easier to draw for me. On the output side, I'm going to have my voltage controlled voltage source, AVOL times VD. My output resistance R out. And this is where I'm going to take my output voltage V out. Here is my common ground. Between the non inverting terminal and ground, I just have a short circuit. So I can connect a wire between here and here. Between my non-inverting terminal, um, I also have a 5 kilo ohm resistor, like so. This leg of the 5 kilo ohm resistor is connected to my 1 volt source, and then the bottom terminal of my 1 volt source is connected to ground. I need to include my feedback resistor, so that's a 10 kilo ohm resistor connected between the inverting terminal, which would be here, and the output terminal, which is over here. And I believe I've finished drawing my practical op amp model of my negative feedback circuit that I have. So, to analyze this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform Kirchhoff's current law at the inverting terminal. So, I'll find this current directed to the left, this current directed up, this current directed to the right and down, sum them together. Um, and I'm also going to have to perform KCL at my output node as well. So I'll have this current directed up, and then this current directed to the right. And that should allow me to calculate several of these quantities. So let's start by applying KCL at the inverting terminal. So I'm going to have V minus, minus 1 volt, divided by 5 kilo ohms, plus V minus, minus V out, 
over 10 kilo ohms plus V minus minus V plus, which in this case is zero since it's connected directly to the ground, divided by R in, and set all of this equal to zero. So that's one equation. If I perform KCL at my output node, I get V out minus V minus divided by 10 kilo ohms plus V out minus ABOL, which is 10 to the 5, VD, which in this case VD is negative V minus, and this is divided by my output resistance of 100 ohms. Set this equal to zero. I just noticed that I used the symbolic representation for my input resistance, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to the value that we were told, which was 1 mega ohm. And I have two equations and two unknowns. So my variables are V minus, the voltage at the inverting input terminal, and V out, the voltage at the output terminal. If I solve these equations simultaneously, I get V minus is equal to 20.199 microvolts, and I get V out is equal to negative 1.9999392 volts. So I can use this information to calculate some of my quantities. For instance, I know what my output voltage is already, so I can replace this question mark with negative 1.9999392 volts. My closed loop voltage gain is defined to be the output voltage divided by the voltage that I applied at the input, so I'm going to call this V source, which in this case is going to be negative 1.9999 392 volts per volt. My differential voltage VD again is going to be negative V minus, so that's negative 20.199 microvolt. So I only have two quantities left to solve for. So I still need to solve for the input resistance as seen by my one volt source and the output resistance seen looking in through the output terminals of the operational amplifier circuit. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. So hopefully everyone remembers Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that if we have a linear black box network, which could be represented by this circuit, the resistance would simply be the voltage drop over the circuit 
divided by the current flowing into the circuit. So since we're trying to find the resistance as seen by the one volt source, what we're looking at then is the voltage drop over this set of terminals, which is exactly one volt, divided by this current flowing in, which I'm going to call I N. in. Since we know what B minus is, we can easily determine what this input current is. And so from that, the input resistance seen by the one volt source is simply one volt, the voltage drop over the input terminals of the circuit, divided by one volt minus 20.199 microvolts divided by 5 kilo ohms, where this quantity in the denominator represents that current I in. The voltage drop over the 5 kilo ohm resistor is 1 volt minus V minus divided by the resistance value. From this, we see that our input resistance, as seen by the 1 volt source, is 5,000 point one zero nine nine seven ohms. So it's just slightly over 5 kilo ohms. To determine the output resistance, we're going to apply Ohm's law again, where we're effectively going to determine the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Okay? So we know what the open circuit voltage is. We've already determined it. V out is negative 1.9999392 volts. Now we need to determine the Norton current if we short circuit these output terminals because the ratio of the feminine voltage V out divided by the Norton current is the output resistance. Let's put this here. So to determine this output resistance, we are going to have to effectively rework the problem because it's set up significantly differently. We're going to apply KCL at the inverting terminal again, adding all of these currents together and setting them equal to zero. But now that we know that V out is exactly zero volts, we should be able to solve for V minus using only a single equation. So if we apply KCL at the inverter terminal, we get KCL at V minus minus one volt divided by five kilo ohms plus V minus divided by 10 kilo ohms plus V minus divided by R in, which is one mega ohm is equal to zero. We can solve this and find that V minus is equal to 0.66 four, five, four volts. Now that we know V minus, we can determine I Norton by performing Kirchhoff's current law at our output node. So the current flowing in along that top branch 
is going to be B minus divided by 10 kilo ohms. The current flowing in through the branch with the dependent voltage source is 10 to the 5 negative V minus divided by our output resistance of 100 ohms. And these together form the Norton current where I Norton is then negative 664.45176 amperes. Lastly, we now need to determine the resistance seen looking into the output terminals. R out is V Thabanin divided by I Norton, which is negative 1.9999392 volts divided by negative 664.45176 amps gives us 3.0085 milliohms. We are now going to rework our negative feedback op-amp circuit using the practical model again, but we're going to substitute in the ideal op-amp parameters of ABOL is equal to infinity, RN is equal to infinity, and R out is equal to zero ohms. So I'm reusing the practical op-amp model, replacing RN with infinity ohms which means we're going to treat it as if it were an open circuit. R out is going to be zero ohms, so we'll treat this resistive branch as if it were a short circuit, and we're replacing ABOL times infinity. But previously, we had to perform Kirchhoff's current law at our inverting input terminal and our output terminal. We're still going to have to do KCL at the inverting input terminal, but we're not going to have to do it at the output terminal because we can actually see what's going on by inspection. What I mean by that is that since we have a short circuit here, we can see that infinity times VD is equal to V out. Now, this might not seem like a startling revelation, but it really is. If we algebraically manipulate this, we see that VD is equal to V out divided by infinity. And as you know, any number divided by infinity should give us zero. So VD, the differential voltage for an ideal operational amplifier, is zero. What this implies then is that the voltage at the non-inverting terminal and the voltage at the inverting terminal must be the same. This is what's known as the voltage constraint, and it's one of the two equations that are used, or excuse me, the two statements that are used to govern how ideal operational amplifiers behave. So if V plus is zero, then V minus must also be zero. So we can now say VD for this case is zero volts. Now let's apply Kirchhoff's current law at the inverting
converting input node. So we'll have zero volts minus one volt, so negative one volt divided by five kilo ohms plus zero volts divided by our infinitely large input resistance. By the way, this tells us, uh, this section right here tells us that no current will ever flow through the input resistance because it's an open circuit. That's where our second ideal operational amplifier law comes from. Plus zero minus V out, so negative V out over 10 kilo ohms is equal to zero. So we have V out is equal to 10 kilo ohms times negative 1 volt divided by 5 kilo ohms is negative 2 volts. So we can place that here. Our closed loop voltage gain is again defined to be the ratio of the output voltage V out divided by the voltage that we apply at our input Vs. So since we applied one volt, negative two volts divided by one volt gives us a gain of negative two. And the last things that we need to calculate are again our input resistance seen by our voltage source and the output resistance seen looking into the uh, output terminals of the off band. All right, so for the input resistance seen by the one volt voltage source, this is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna use the same method where we're going to say that this one volt divided by this current I in gives us our input resistance. Well, R in is then one volt divided by one volt minus zero volts because V minus is zero divided by five kilo ohms is simply five kilo ohms. So the input resistance seen by our ideal, or seen by the voltage source when we're looking at an ideal operational amplifier, is simply the voltage, or excuse me, the resistor that's actually connected to the voltage source. For our output resistance, we are going to have to get arguably creative in order to solve this. Um, We can really do it by determining the Thevenin equivalent looking in, okay? So what I mean by that is right now we have an open circuit across our output terminals and we know that the voltage across our output terminals is exactly negative two volts. Would that value change at all if we connected, say, a 10 kilo ohm resistor? And the answer is no, right? Our voltage constraint equation is going to force this to still be negative 2 volts. If we instead had a 1 kilo ohm resistor, our output voltage would still be negative 2 volts. So effectively, what we have is a system where we have for all intents and purposes, a negative two volt source our output resistance in question
and then a load resistance here, RL, and we know that the voltage drop over RL is always going to be negative 2 volts. From that, R out must be 0 ohms. Now to wrap things up. The values that we have gotten using the ideal operational amplifier parameters really aren't all that different than what we got using the practical model, uh, where we had uh, an open loop voltage gain of 10 to the 5, an input resistance of 1 mega ohm, and an output resistance of 100 ohms. So what that means for us is that we can actually just use the ideal operational amplifier rules anytime we have a negative feedback op amp circuit, and we'll be extraordinarily close to what we would have gotten using the practical op amp model. So, to reiterate what the ideal operational amplifier rules are, I'll draw a little picture. So for a negative feedback op amp circuit, let's make it this way. Two rules are number one, there can be no potential difference between the input terminals. which is just our voltage constraint equation, B plus is equal to B minus, or our differential voltage, VD, must be exactly equal to zero volts. And our second ideal op amp rule is that no current can flow into the input terminals. Of the op amp. So if you, um, which looks like this, I plus is equal to zero amps, and I minus is equal to zero amps. So if we applied those rules to this circuit, we can actually get the same results, at least for um, the gain and the output voltage, very quickly. So let me explain what I mean by that. If there's no potential difference between the input terminals, then that means that this VD is equal to zero volts. Since we have zero volts at our non-inverting terminal, we must have zero volts at our inverting input terminal. Since no current can flow into the input terminals of the op amp, meaning that this current, I minus, is zero amps, and this current, I plus, is zero amps, then any current that flows through this five kilo ohm resistor, which I'm gonna call I, has to also flow through this 10 kilo ohm resistor. We can calculate I on the left hand side as one volt divided by five kilo ohms. And on the right hand side, we have, uh, let's see, negative V out 
divided by 10 kilo ohms. If we put these two expressions and equate them, what we find is that V out is equal to 10 kilo ohms times negative 1 volt over 5 kilo ohms is negative 2 volts, which exactly agrees with what we got previously. 